Hello and thank you so much for joining me today for another Thought from the Bible. My name is Becky and I'm a missionary here living in this beautiful country of Liberia with Mission Aviation Fellowship along with my husband Dave and it is my absolute joy and privilege to be able to share a little bit, just 10 minutes of encouragement with you from this, my, my favourite book in the whole world, God's Word, the Bible. Just this last weekend I, I heard a message from the Bible that, that really stayed with me. A little part of it just has been niggling away in the back of my mind. And the crux of it is that we are saved to serve God in our generation. Now our salvation comes with, with plenty of benefits from us. Freedom from the curse of sin and death and eternal life guaranteed and a life no longer needing to be lived with, with guilt and shame. There's so much good stuff we get out of salvation. But while we're here on this earth, we're also called to serve others. It's not all about us. But there's often a feeling that this means doing something absolutely epic, right? We should all be out there planting churches or preaching the gospel or selling everything that we own and moving off to some far-flung location. And, you know, those things may be part of your calling, possibly, but they may not be. I just love that the Bible shows us characters who served him wholeheartedly with the gifts that they had. You know, we're told about a group of women who were wealthy, who supported the ministry of Jesus. They used their means, their wealth, to spread and further the gospel message. In the book of Acts chapter 9, we're told about a woman called Tabitha or, or Dorcas. And this woman becomes ill and, and actually dies, at least for a little while. When Peter arrives on the scene, the crowd there, they're not talking to him about the amazing sermons that this woman preached. They're not talking to him about the, the tally of people who were saved as a direct result of her work. This is what they were saying. We read in Acts chapter 9 and verse 39. Peter went with them and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Now this woman, Dorcas, clearly had a gift for tailoring. She could make robes and clothes, clearly of a, a decent enough quality that people were showing them off after her death. I don't know if she used that gift to make a living. We, we don't have that information, but I, I can imagine that she may well have done. But she also used that gift for God's glory by using her skills to help the poor, to help those, those widows who had no hope and no income and no one to provide for them. Dorcas sacrificially gave of, of material, of her time, of her skills for God's glory. And the people, they were devastated when she died because while she was alive, she recognised that she was saved to serve, that she could use the gifts and the talents that she had for something greater than simply providing for herself, but instead for showing the love of God in a real and practical way. Now, every single one of us has gifts. We all of us have talents. Even if you don't think that you do, I can guarantee you there is something that you can do well. So all of us have things that we are good at doing and we all of us have things that we are less good at doing. Rather than trying to be somebody else, wishing that we had somebody else's gift or experiences or means or talents, 
perhaps we would do much better looking at what we do have, looking at what we can do, and questioning how we can use those things for God's glory, how we can use those things to serve this generation that we find ourselves living in. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is found in Ephesians chapter two, it's verse 10. And I just love how the New Living Translation puts it. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. There's so much that we can get out of this tiny little verse. Firstly, God views us as his masterpiece, his workmanship, the very best of all of the things that he has created. When you look around at the beauty of creation, when you see the wonder of the stars in the sky above, you can remember that God values you more highly than any of that. He thinks that you are the best thing that he made. Humanity was his greatest creation, his masterpiece. I'm not making that up. The Bible says so. And yet how often do we say otherwise? If only I had more skills. If only I had different skills. If only I had better skills. I could use them for his glory. But just me as I am, I'm nothing special. That's not what God says. He says you are a masterpiece. Or perhaps we get caught up thinking about our past lives, thinking about things that we did in our history. How could I possibly do anything good for God? He knows what I've done. He knows the kind of person that I was. And yet this verse assures us that we have been created anew in Christ Jesus. We don't need to cling on to the things of the past which he has wiped away. And finally, he planned good things for us to do long ago. As in, he made you the masterpiece that you needed to be to do the good work that he had in mind specifically for you. That is an encouraging thought. If he has called you to something, then he has or he will equip you for that something. You don't need to be somebody else. You don't need to worry about what other people may or may not be doing. You don't need to compare yourself with another person, feeling that, that their kingdom impact is so much greater than yours could ever be. All you need to do is to work out how you personally can use your gifts and your talents and your skills to glorify our great God and to serve this generation. Isn't that just beautifully freeing today? What contentment and joy we could live with if we truly got to grips with this truth. Yes, we are saved to serve, but in our own uniquely special ways. And when we find those, when we start walking in them, there is nothing quite like it. So that's a challenge for us all today. How can we use our uniquely special skills for God? The first step is to identify what those skills may be. Are you good at cooking or cleaning or administration? What skills do you possess? Maybe you could use those amazing cooking skills to, to cook a, a beautiful meal for somebody who is living alone and is isolated and feels lonely and lost. Or for somebody who has nothing, somebody who finds themselves living on the streets. Maybe you could offer those amazing cleaning skills to help at your, your local church to make sure everything is spick and span when guests come into that building. Maybe 
you could use that that administration expertise to volunteer an hour or two to help with a, a local charity or ministry that is reaching out with the gospel message. Whatever skills, whatever gifts you have, no matter how small they may seem, you can use them to serve. You can use them for the glory of God. And if you don't know where to start, just start with a prayer like this. Heavenly Father, Please show me the gifts and the skills that you have given me. And Holy Spirit, please guide me in how to use them for your glory. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back on Wednesday next week with another thought from the Bible. So I will see you then.